Okay, um, I've been asked multiple times to document a, uh, a teaching sequence I use to um, understand intubation in terms of, or in the context of geometry. So we all learn the geometric model of the alignment of three axes, um, something like this, that was made by Bannister um, in 1944, completely appropriate for direct laryngoscopy. Doesn't help us actually understand how we intubate people with um, a video laryngoscope. So it hasn't translated well uh, to, uh, to the modern era, era of intubation. So um, Ken Greenland's an anesthesiologist and he published in 2011 a different theory of intubation or a th different theory of anatomy. This is the nose and the head up here, chin's there. And he said, well, the natural airway has two curves in it. It's serpentine geometry. The vocal cords are here. And there's two curves, a primary curve and a secondary curve. And he noted that those curves are in opposite directions, anterior, anterior orientation and then posterior orientation. And the inflection point between the curves is at the vocal cords. And um, this makes, this can help, we, we can use this model to explain both direct laryngoscopy uh, intubations and video laryngoscopy based intubations. So um, the teaching sequence consists of this. It's a direct laryngoscope. And the way we intubate with a direct laryngoscope um, is we change this geometry. We place the, the blade in and we actually use force to flatten the geometry and that force lifts the head and um, relieves this inflection point so that we end up with this, basically linear geometry. So tracheal access is linear. So I ask my residents when they're doing this sequence, focus on the force in both of your hands to try to understand, um, understand more about what you're doing with the tools. So blade goes in, glasses go on, and then I'm going to use this to, there we go, to actually uh, flatten that primary curve. And it, you can see it lifts the jaw and flattens the inflection point. And now we have linear tracheal access. By definition, my eye lined up with the vocal cords is a straight line or I wouldn't be able to see them. This is a bougie. Bougies are linear. You can bend them. Um, if you bend it, then it'll be uh, non-dynamic. You're stuck with the curve you have, but bougies are best used as linear tools. This is when the outcomes are the most consistent. And so I'm gonna go ahead and place this bougie into the trachea. And if you watch here, this trachea is actually freed. And so we're gonna be able to see the force on the trachea as it moves around with each of these different techniques. Um, now, the trachea in a human wouldn't be moving around. The tracheal force or the tracheal tissue would just be simply absorbing that force. So I can see, let me get it in here again. There I am. And you can see, we'll do a close up, the, the uh, tip bouncing along those tracheal rings. That's the bounce that helps us hypothesize we're in the right place, the trachea. Um, we still need to use entitled CO2 and other uh, methods to to confirm our hypothesis. So uh, do not count on tracheal ring bouncing um, or tracheal ring clicks as a surefire way to tell that you're in the, the, uh, in the trachea. So this changes geometry with force and we change the geometry of the patient's um, airway into linear geometry. Bougies work great with linear geometry. So that's the first intubation in the sequence. The second intubation, we use a hyperangulated blade, video laryngoscopy blade. Now the way this works is we look, you'll see that it's shaped like the primary curve. We don't change the patient's geometry with video laryngoscopy. You can lift as much as you want. You'll never be able to see from here to there to see the vocal cords. If you're using this blade properly, it goes in and around the primary curve and there's very little force in this hand. So, in we go with the blade. 
and I'm going to bring it around and again very little force and there's my vocal cords. So then I invite my residents to use a bougie and now we're going to mix serpentine geometry with linear tracheal access and see how that goes. So in the bougie goes and when they get here um, they can see the vocal cords and I, I have them stop right there and I bet them dinner that they can't get that tip into the trachea. Everybody takes me up on it. I win a lot of dinners. I don't collect on very many. And you'll see that this tip goes right down the esophagus because linear, and we're working around a curve here. And uh, today I may be able to get it in. Nope. And no matter how much I go here, you can see it does not solve that problem uh, because the, the primary curve restricts my ability to uh, move that tip around and that primary curve's intact. So then I have them take a glide right stylet which is shaped just like the primary curve, just like the primary curve and um, this allows them to work around that primary curve and now I can quite easily get the tip to the trachea. Now they've experienced that primary curve. Now I can't enter the trachea here because all of my force is being transmitted up into the top of the trachea. So I've got to actually remove this and I remove it and then I push the tube forward and that's how we enter the trachea. And now I didn't watch, um, but we can, you can rewind and watch and see what's happening here at the trachea. Again, in a human, the trachea isn't going to move around. It's just going to absorb that force. Generally, force on tissue is bad. All right, so that's the second part of the sequence. Hyperangulated blade, linear bougie, and then a pre-curved stylet. So they've now experienced failure at the primary curve and then success at the primary curve because we moved from linear technology to, uh, to curve technology. And they also experienced the, the uh, force because I asked them to, to think about the force in their right hand as they went through the vocal cords and transitioned um, through the inflection point and into the, uh, into the trachea, posterior and down into the trachea. So the third part is to use a hyperangulated blade with a dynamic introducer. Now, dynamic introducers um, have the ability to both move the tip anteriorly and posteriorly. Um, this is the dynamic introducer or the steerable introducer we're bringing to mark. So mark it. So posterior, anterior with a flexible shaft. So wherever the tip is steered, the shaft can follow and it can make a serpentine, um, follow a serpent, it can take a serpentine shape and this can actively navigate posteriorly and anteriorly. Now you can do the same thing with the fiber optic bronchoscope, okay? So if you don't have a, a steerable introducer in your sim lab, um, and you have an, even an old fiber optic bronchoscope that doesn't have any visualization but can be steered, you can accomplish the same um, experience for your uh, students. So visualization, right around that primary curve, very little force here. And then access is now dynamic or steerable. And we see the tip come up and that's that anterior motion. I seated at the cords and I asked the residents, um, just push gently, it will not go down the trachea because it has that anterior orientation. Now we need to solve the inflection point between anterior and posterior curves and the secondary curve. So then I have them pull the trigger, move the tip down, I'm solving the inflection point, and suddenly the device just dives into the trachea. And when it dives into the trachea, they have that aha moment of now they have experienced the inflection point and the secondary curve. And then handle pops off and tube is railroading. And and out this comes. Again, I, I didn't really watch what was happening with the trachea, but remember the trachea in this model is gonna move around if we're applying force anywhere. So that's the sequence, and I'll go over it one more time. 
Direct laryngoscopy, flatten the primary curve, reduce the inflection point. Tracheal access is with a bougie, linear visualization, linear tracheal access. Second intubation, hyperangulated blade, looks around the primary curve, serpentine pathway remains intact, linear access right down the esophagus. Rescue themselves with with a anterior curved silet, brings it to the cords, but then they've got to force and rotate and use the anterior trachea to turn the corner. And then the last sequence is um, dynamic introducer that allows both anterior and posterior steering of the tip. And um, we can now work around a serpentine pathway with very little force to tissue. So that's it. What I really want my residents and my um, learners to leave this teaching sequence with is a more nuanced view of um, intubation, anatomy, and geometry. When I ask them to uh, draw, before I get started with them, I say draw um, anatomy and geometry of intubation, and they do this. Epiglottis, vocal cords, arachnoids. Two-dimensional view, reinforced by our video laryngoscope. Um, Hopefully at the end of this sequence, they walk away with a mental model that is three dimensions. This is the vocal cords. And then we've got these, this third dimension with two curves. So um, that's the sequence. And I hope this uh, helps you with your learners. And um, remember that people don't die because we can't intubate them. They die because we fail to stop trying to intubate them. It's all about oxygen delivery. If you're struggling with an intubation, you should stop what you're doing, deliver oxygen, reassess, think, go get help, get different tools, make your next attempt um, different, and make your next attempt your best attempt. Thank you.